All right, guys, here we go. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for uh, jumping on this webinar today. We are going to learn a lot. So let's get prepared. Okay, this is this is super important. And I just want to check, uh, can you guys see my screen right now? Can you see uh, the welcome page here? Just give me a yes in the chat uh, if you guys can see my screen. Probably seeing the webinar right now, but did you see that uh, keynote? Okay, awesome. All right, so let's get started here. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Get Slim in 90 Days. This is your blueprint to get you in the best shape of your life. Thank you so much for taking the time. It'll be about 60 seconds, uh, so, sorry, 60 minutes. So if you have to drop off at any point, I will be recording this. You guys can pick up where you left off, but I recommend you stay on for the entire time so that you can see where we're getting into. So quick agenda here. So it's, it's to audit where you are now. And this is important because we like to put this audit kind of under the microscope to make sure we can identify what exactly it is we need to work on to see you to get uh, to a finish line, to you know an, an ultimate goal. And that doesn't mean that your goal is, is static and it's always the same. It could be changing every three months, every year, every five years. It depends on your life. And, and we get that. But without a vision or a plan, then we're not going to get anywhere. So it's super important that we pay attention to where we are now and where we'd like to go. So we got to identify why we want to make that change. That is super important. Identify your why and how come now 2019 is the time to do it. Some of the things that we're going to go over today, we're going to talk about diet for the most part. Um, exercise, we will touch on briefly, but today it's mostly about diet and kind of how to keep it in check. And what are proteins, fats, carbs, calories? Why do they matter? What do they do? And this is super important as well. So this was me when I first went on my weight loss journey. Uh, and you know what? I'm not scared to share these pictures anymore. The one in the top left there, that was 2010. And I was about 240 pounds when I first started there. You can see kind of my transition through the year. So I'd say about these, these pictures are about a month apart. Uh, so the one in the bottom right there was towards the end of the year. I think that was more summertime. I can't recall. But uh, anyways, that was about nine years ago when I went on my big weight loss journey. I ended up losing 70 pounds in a year. Okay, and why I know this works and why I know this style of eating works is because I tested it on my clients and I've seen results and I've seen results in me as well. For example, look at my client Richard there. This was only 30 days that we worked together. Uh, if anything, if you don't see the, the core definition there, take a look at the length of his beard. That's most important. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But Richard is a good friend of mine. We went to elementary school together, and uh, he was looking to tone up his shoulders. We can see a little bit more definition in the shoulders as well. So we touched on some big, big talking points with his diet. So that was just awesome to see. And Peter, Peter was someone who's he's actually getting married today. Today is his wedding. So he approached me earlier this year, and he said, "I need to get in wedding shape." So his big thing is he slouches. He, he suffers from that poor posture. So we really wanted to hone in that diet and really focus on some exercises that were focusing on his shoulder retraction. So that was only 30 days as well. We saw some weight loss, about five pounds in Peter, but more importantly, we saw more confidence. We saw him pull his shoulders back and fix that posture. This is another client of mine, Steven. Steven just sent me these pictures this morning. Wow, 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 wow. So Steven and I have been working together for three months now. Uh, the, he's lost 25 pounds three, in three months. We know that we needed to make a drastic change. He was ready to go, but he still wanted to do the things that he loved. So he wanted to get slim and we did that for him, 25 pounds, and we are still going. We're still going. We're going to see how far we can get with Steven. We're not going to stop with his goals. So even before you start trying to change, why? We spoke about this at the beginning. So why do you want to do this? And you want to get specific. So don't say weight loss in general. What ends up happening is if we focus on weight loss in general, this allows us to get off track a lot easier. So two of my biggest tips are number one is find someone that you can keep you accountable. So if it's a spouse, if it's a neighbor, if it's a coworker, if it's me, it doesn't matter. You need to tell people 
that you're on this journey. You need to say, listen, I'm hoping to lose 25 pounds in 90 days. That is my goals, just like my client Steven did. You want to do the same thing, you have to tell somebody. You have to write this down. This is super important. Identify what is holding you back. That is also really important as well because if you don't know what's blocking your path, then you don't know how to climb over it. And I'm not saying you all have to do it all at once, but you have to identify that so that slowly over time you can start to say, you know what, I can wean down my sugar. I can stop drinking so much alcohol at night. Maybe it's the sweet tooth, those kinds of things. Instead of doing it five days per week, maybe you're only doing it three days per week at the beginning. So we have to identify that. Gratitude. I cannot say enough about gratitude. And the reason why I put this at the very beginning, because as I think it's important to say that wellness is not just about diet and exercise. If it was, we'd all be skinny. We'd all be slim. We'd all be in shape and we'd all be happy. But you cannot get there without being grateful for what you have already. So I want you to think about every single night or every single morning, whatever works for your schedule, write it down. Three things that you were grateful for in that day. For me today, I'm actually grateful. My daughter is staying with my uh, her grandma, so my mother-in-law this weekend, which I love my daughter, but at the same time, my wife and I are going out on a date tonight. And we need this. And I am super grateful for my mother-in-law being so close to us so that we can say, please, hey, do you want to watch Julia? Do you want Julia to come over and sleep with you this weekend? So practicing gratitude, guys, this is super important. Hey, listen, if there's anything in the chat right now, um, I am not able to see the chat. So what you see on my screen is what I'm looking at. So if you guys are chatting anything, I'll check in in just a couple minutes, okay? So uh, moving on from gratitude, get rid of the noise. Get rid of multiple opinions uh, trying to give you different information. So yeah, over here, you're hearing this from this person. Over here, someone else is saying this. Here, 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 it can get confusing. So when it comes to health and wellness, I recommend sticking to two or three trustworthy people that you can say, these are the people whose philosophies I'm going to stay with for the next 90 days. Get rid of everybody else. It's called shiny object syndrome. If you just constantly look at so many different options to say keto works, paleo works, uh, uh, the, um, geez, what else is there? There's the beach body diet. There's Jenny Craig. There's Weight Watchers, all of those things. So focus on two or three, find what works and go with it. Now, getting rid of the noise also counts with your personal life as well. So if anybody in your personal life is giving you some negativity, and we know right now in Canada, we've got a federal election going on. So <clears throat> if there is some negativity going on in your life, ditch it. Just block those people, even if it's in the interim, unfollow them on social media, whatever you need to do to get rid of that noise and that negativity. I recommend try to do at least 10 people per week. Can you unfollow? Can you block them? Whatever you need to do to stick to the positivity, only have positive messages in your life. This is going to go in a long way in decreasing your stress because we know that stress increases the hormone called cortisol, which can lead to weight gain. So limiting that stress, super important. And this is one of the good ways to do it. So let's get into the diet here and what exactly a diet is. Now, a diet, if you think of diet, you will die, all right? A diet is a style of eating. It is not a meal plan. It is not a Jenny Craig. It is not a Weight Watchers. It is a style of eating that you practice to get the nutrients that you need. And the reason I say that is because it's, it's built by habits. It's built on habits. What can you do to habitually do something every single day, the same thing every single day to see some results. So it's not trying one thing one day, another thing the other day, and this thing the next day because you will not see results. You have to build some habits to see some results. So for me, I mean, this is this is what we've been hearing for a lot of the time. Diet is 80% of the equation and 20% comes, to, uh, it, it is fitness. I mean, there's so many other things that go into it. We spoke about it earlier, gratitude. We're talking about stress reduction, those kinds of things. But if we were to just, you know, um, Think about weight loss and, and split it up into two and we were to say diet and, and exercise, well, then 80% would be diet, 20% fitness. In my opinion, it's closer to 90-10. Honestly, you can lose weight without working out. So if you're someone who doesn't enjoy going to the gym, you don't need to go to the gym. 
If you just focus on what I'm about to teach you, then you're going to see some amazing results, just like all my clients that I showed you at the beginning have done. All right, so this was me. Oh boy, so I didn't show you this picture at the beginning, but this was me at my heaviest. I was 240 pounds. I was unhappy. I refused to smile in this picture. My uh, girlfriend at the time, my now wife, took this picture for me as I decided to make a real change in my life. So 240 pounds. The reason I did this is because I was a hockey referee. And as a hockey referee, it was super important for me to be in shape and keep up with the hockey. And I was at a level where the hockey was just getting too fast for me because I was slow. I was lethargic. I was out of shape. And the reason I did that or the reason I got like this, oh, I was a partier. All right. So this was me and my buddy, Chris, back in the day. Yeah, we used to just go crazy. And we used to, you know what? Here was my schedule when I was in college. I would wake up, I would go to class eight o'clock in the morning. I would have class until five o'clock. Then I would go referee two or three games. That took me to 10 o'clock at night. I'd have some dinner. Maybe if it was the weekend, I'd go out with the boys. I was up, 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 up. And then I got an overnight paper route. I was going on Red Bull, two to three hours sleep per night, never making meals for myself. You know what my meals were? Seriously, pizza pops, pumpkin pie, and orange juice. That's what got me through college. Also, I found a way that you could eat as a starving student on spaghetti, cheese, and spaghetti sauce. $14 a week, I found out a way to eat. So I was, yes, I was one of the broke students, but what ended up happening was, is I ballooned. I ballooned up to this 240 pounds, and I was just super, super unhappy. So where I was today, where I am now. So this is me two days ago. This, I had a, a photo shoot come, uh, this past week. So I decided to take some bathroom shots, bathroom selfies. Yeah, I know it's a little bit, uh, just, you know, whatever. I'm taking pictures of myself. That's just how I have to do things now. But this is me now. I'm about 180 pounds. The lowest I got to was 170. I felt very thin at that point. So right now in between 180, 190, that's where I'm maintaining things right now. And the reason I show you this is because I was where you are. Okay. So if you're frustrated week over week, day over day, there is a light at the end of the tunnel if you just stay consistent. So let's talk about food itself. All right. What are proteins? What are fats? What are carbs? And I'm just giving you this list right now. So if you want to pull out your phone or uh, if you've been with me for a while, you probably already have this list, but take a picture of these foods. So these are the foods. If you're confused as to what is a protein, what is a fat? Here is a list. It's laid out for you that you can say, okay, if I want some pork tonight, then I can have Canadian bacon or I can have uh, some ham or, uh, you know, if I wanted that lamb, then I could do a lamb leg, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the best thing I say is download some food tracking apps. Two of my favorites, one of them, My Fitness Pal and Life Sum, L I F E. S-U-M. Those two can track your proteins, your fats, your carbohydrates, so you can track these things throughout the day. Same with your fats. Your fats at the bottom there, uh, notice how there aren't very many vegetable oils. So the vegetable oils, so like your canola oil, uh, the sprays that you get a lot of the times, those are very heavily produced. They are, they are cheap substitutes. Uh, things like margarine, where they're created by man. I, I recommend to stay away from those kinds of things when it comes to your fats. So stick to coconut oil, stick to um, olive oil. Some avocado oil is also very good as well. And then to supplement things, fish oil, your krill oil, pumpkin seed oil, those kinds of things. All right. So I'm just going to switch over my screen right now. I just want to see if there are any questions in the chat at this point. Okay. All right. Good stuff. So we're going to keep rolling on here, guys. Hey, welcome. I see Wendy and Maria. They are on now. We've got Kara and Aaron as well. This is awesome, guys. Good, good, good. So let's move on and let's go back to the presentation here. So we have got the foods that we want to eat. So if you enjoy fish, et cetera, et cetera, take a screenshot of this one. Let's move on to the next one. So these are your carbs and these are your veggies. And I'll just explain in just a moment what each do to your body. 
Now, a lot of people fear the carbs. Look how big I've made that list for you. The reason I've made it so big is because carbs are not the enemy. Please do not fear them, all right? Now, eating carbs will not make you fat, but eating an excess of carbs in absence of protein and fat will make you fat, okay? So keep that in mind here. Carbs are not the enemy, but there is a way that you should be eating them. So let me take a sip of water here. And your vegetables. You'll notice here I put an asterisk beside the vegetables. You should be eating vegetables with every single meal, all right? Put them in you. Blend them up. Boil them. Bake them. Uh, whatever you need to do to get them into your body, just make sure you're eating more vegetables. 50% of your plate should be vegetables, green leafy vegetables, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so let's move on to what exactly a protein is. So your macronutrients, your three major ones, protein, fat, and carbs. Let's go over each of them. So this Protein, it's the macronutrient that repairs your muscles. So after a tough workout, after a stressful day at work, your muscles get broken down, okay? So if, if, if you guys can see my arm here, if I'm doing a bicep curl, right? So if I am contracting that muscle, what ends up happening is, is the muscles get squeezed together. And as I lengthen them, that stretches out the muscle. And this is what damages the muscles, the lengthening there. And then that repetition, it breaks down the muscles, okay? And so you need the protein after every single workout to make sure that you're getting that in you, okay? So in order to get leaner, your protein content should be a little bit higher. So this is super, super important to think of. If you're not tracking the foods that go into you, then you're not exactly going to see the best results. Now, if you'd like to keep it super simple, Okay, I want you to think about eating clean 80% of the time with a focus leaning towards protein. All right, so if this gets too in-depth to you or the numbers seem a little bit too confusing, then I want you to take that principle away, if nothing else, today. Okay, but if let's go a little bit more in-depth into it. Protein is actually one of the macronutrients that makes you feel fuller. So if you find that you've got that 3 o'clock munchies or the after-dinner munchies, I recommend grabbing something with protein content because that'll make sure that you don't go overboard, say, on the carbohydrates or the sugars, right, because you need that uh, craving fixed, right, uh, filled right there. So... There are four calories per gram of protein. And the way I, sh uh, the, the reason I tell you this is because we are going to create a meal plan towards the end. All right, super, super important. So protein, these are your, if we were to go back the screen here to protein. So these are your meats. These are your uh, chicken, beef, poultry, pork, lamb, fish, eggs, and dairy. Uh, if you are a vegetarian, you know where to find your sources. But uh, for the carnivores in the room, this is uh, exactly what you want to eat for your proteins. Now, that doesn't mean you have, there are foods on the list that if you want to try them, if you want to eat them, that's great. As long as they are ethically raised they are grass-fed, they are, um, you know, pasture-raised, those kinds of things, then great. Try them. As long as you know that they're, they are sourced properly, then that is um, perfect for your protein sources. All right? So if you guys have any questions along the way, go ahead and put them in the chat. I will check those in just a little bit. Uh, and just a reminder, if you do need to hop off at any point, this is being recorded. So hopefully I can get a link to you at the end. This is the first time I've used this platform. So hopefully I can get this to you at the end. I will. I am recording this though right now. So in the carbohydrates, again, I spoke about this. Carbohydrates are not the enemy. But if you are eating an excess of carbohydrates, then yes, you will see some weight gain. It, it's the way you have to structure it, and I'll show you exactly towards the end how to structure a meal plan that will work for you. Now, carbs are the fuel. This is exactly what your body lives off of. This is the fuel. If your body were a vehicle, you should be feeding it with carbohydrates. All right, carbohydrates, that's the gasoline that gets the energy going. Now, if you have heard of someone who's, who's on the keto diet, a ketogenic diet, this is something that is lower carb and higher fat. Now, what ends up happening is, is your body starts to recognize that because it's so low carbs, it needs fuel. It will find the fuel somehow. So it starts taking it from the fat sources and it starts to burn a little bit more fat the only problem with that is, is over time, it has been proven to show some brain health, uh, positive cognitive health with the ketogenic diet, 
but uh, you won't be able to lift as much. You won't. Some people have noticed that their stress starts to go up a little bit as well. Uh, their sleep patterns just get off just a little bit. And for ladies in the room, the menstrual cycle can be affected as well. Okay, so I want you to keep that in mind that ketogenic is a great, it's, it's a great, great tool to use for uh, some weight loss. But if you are someone who is go, 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 high stress all the time, someone that uh, is doing high intensity interval training all the time, then I want you to consider getting some carbohydrates into your body. Now, I do want to tell you, I am not a med medical professional by any means. I've just, I've gone through this all and I've seen results based on the style that I train people, okay? So if you want to go ahead and go to get, do a ketogenic diet, go ahead and do that, that's fine. But you know, talk to your doctor first, make sure you seek out the advice from a medical professional, okay? So carbs, these are the sugars, these also help you stay regular. These usually have a lot of fiber in them, all right? So carbohydrates will keep that body regular, which is super important, especially as you make your way past, you know, 40, 50, 60 years old. You want to make sure that you've got some uh, amazing, amazing, amazing health. Now, back to the ketogenic for just a moment. I was on the keto diet for the longest time, and I did see some benefits. I, I saw some weight loss. Uh, I have ballooned up and down on the keto because what ends up happening is, is because I'm so low carb all the time, I end up binging. Okay, so I will go low, 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 low carb, and I'll hold that for you know a couple of days, and then I'll eat a, I'll, I, I used to eat an entire cake or an entire pizza on Friday night because that was my cheat day, and that takes you out of ketosis. I was a young dumb kid at the time, but at the same time, that's what ends up happening. That's what happened to me is I craved the sugar because I wasn't getting it in my body. All right, and what ended up happening was is because I was so low carb for such a long time. I remember one time I went out with the boys and I, I didn't, I hadn't had a sip of alcohol in the longest time. And so I decided, you know what, I'm going to have a couple beers. I'll just, it's another night out with the boys. No big deal. So I think I had four bottles of beer that night at the bar and, and no big deal. Oh, no word of a lie. The next day I was in bed the entire day. I couldn't move. I couldn't even hold down water. I was I'm, I'm pretty sure I had some sort of spike in my carbs or alcohol poisoning or something to that effect. But at the same time, oh boy, that, what's it, that's what ends up happening is if you go too low carb for such a long time and then you spike things up, your insulin just has a hard time regulating it. And insulin is a hormone in your body that needs to be regular as well. I noticed some constipation as well when I was on that ketogenic diet. So if it's, if it's something you want to explore, that's great. Just make sure you seek out the right advice. Make sure you Google, uh, you um, talk to your doctor or even just look for some uh, reputable sources if you were to Google it, okay? So back to carbs, carbohydrates, four calories per gram. Okay, so the four calories, this is important as well because we will create some meal plans toward the end. Fats, fats will not make you fat. This is something we were fed by marketing back in the 80s and 90s. Remember Suzanne Summers, right? With her, whatever she went through, I think that was the biggest time where, where the low fat craze really kicked in. Uh, it was right around that time and uh, what ended up happening was is foods were being created to be low fat. And when they're processed that much, they need to add other ingredients to make sure that they are low fat. And it's actually better to eat these fats because the fats, these are things that uh, they help with your brain health. They help with your joint lubrication. Uh, they help with uh, so many, so many things. So you want to make sure that you're getting the fats in your body. Now, there's two types of fats. They're the good fats and there are the bad fats, okay? So the brain and organ health, we went through that. Good fats versus bad fats. So what are the good fats? Those are the things like your mono, uh, mono unsaturated fats and your poly, poly unsaturated fats. So things like your avocados, uh, the nuts, uh, those kinds of things are super, super good. And then your oils that you wanna cook with. So your sunflower oil, uh, things that you get from your fatty fish as well. Those are super important. The ones that you want to avoid, the trans fats and uh, the saturated fats. Those two fats you want to avoid uh, as much as you can. There's going to be times that you will get them in your body. Don't stress it too much, but as long as you stick to the good fats, you should be good to go. 
Now, the reason I show you that this is nine calories per gram is, is when somebody gets fat adapted or on the ketogenic diet, they end up consuming a lot of fat, but you can overdo it with your fat. Notice how that's almost double the calories per gram of fat. All right. So super important when we create that meal plan in just a little bit. I'm just going to check if there are any questions and I can address those right now before we move on. All right, great. Okay, so again, if you have any questions along the way, we will answer towards the end. Uh, but for now, we'll just keep going. So in our fats, we've already gone through this. Brain and organ health, super, super important to make sure that you get the fats in your body. Let's create a meal plan. And this is going to get mathematical. So if you have your phone and you want to look at your calculator as you're doing this, I recommend you take some notes because I've done the numbers for me. But we're going to create a meal plan right now for me so that you guys can see how to structure it for yourself, all right? So we, we spoke about beforehand, and I sent you a couple emails as we were leading into this about calories. Calories, I don't want you to count the calories per se, okay? Now, that just means I want you to think about a general number and guesstimate where you should be. All right. Calorie counting is it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work if you're doing it on a daily basis. OK, so don't think of it too much as something that needs to stress you out. This is just something that you should have a general pattern for and you should focus on that, because if, if you don't at least have the blinders on a little bit, you're going to go off the path. OK, and you're going to say, oh, oh there's a party over here and I need that piece of cake and I've got this this weekend and there was pizza. So I had to have that because my friends were having that. And, you know, I, I always have two beers at the end of the night at the end of the night. So that is, you know, you're looking at 600, 500, 600 calories right there for just a couple of beers. I don't even know how many calories are in a bottle of beer. So don't quote me on those numbers, but you know what I mean? Okay. So at least have a general number. So Calories don't matter, but they are everything. If you go off constantly all the time, you're just going to see some declining results. So we want to make sure that you're on that path to success. So at least start with a general number and maybe just put in some of your meals through the day on one of those apps that I spoke about earlier, either Life Sum or My Fitness Pal. Lots of free apps out there that you can track, uh, you can track your food and your meals. When it comes to measuring your food, measuring your food, it's kind of tough to say, did I have four ounces of chicken or did I have eight ounces of chicken? If you have a scale, great. That is a lot of work to try to weigh out each individual meal. So I'm not saying you have to do that, but at least give an educated guess, okay? You know, four ounces of chicken or a four ounce uh, steak is, is probably only about this this big, four ounces is actually quite small. So think about that uh, when you're trying to track these meals. Now, for your numbers, to find out how many calories you should be eating for, per day, and this is very broad. It's based on a general North American population, so that's important to, to uh, let you know, is for fat loss, you want to multiply your weight by 10. That is the number of calories that you should be eating per day. So if there's someone uh, for example, is 250 pounds, then they should be eating about 2,500 calories per day. That is just a recommendation. You can go higher, you can go lower and still see results, but this is just a great guideline to go by. If you're hoping to just maintain where you are, then multiply that number by 12, okay? The 10 number just above there, that will put you in what we call a caloric deficit based on your basic metabolic rate. Okay, now I know those are just big words that I've thrown out at you, but let's let's put, try and put it simple here. So if Justin right now was was just sitting here all day and I needed my primary functions to operate, to establish, right? So breathing, blood going through my veins, uh, talking to you, it expends some energy here. Uh, this would be my basic metabolic rate is the exact number of calories that I would need to do to just do the basics, okay? And everybody's going to be different because, I mean, every body in the entire planet, there's seven and a half billion people on this planet or how many other people, how many people are on this planet? I'm not sure, but you know what I mean? Like everybody's going to be really, really different. So if you need that number, get it tested by your doctor. Uh, so this is why it's super, super general. Okay, so the 10 number will put you in what we call a caloric deficit. That means you are eating fewer calories 
than what is required to operate your basic activity level. And that should include your workouts as well. So you should be mixing in some exercise. We'll get to some exercise in just a little bit, but 10 is a good number to be at. 12 is a good number for maintenance. If you were someone who was hoping to put on a little bit of muscle, uh, then times your number by 15, okay? So let's move on here. Let's look at a meal plan for me. If I were to create a meal plan for, for Justin Slim right now, so I'm 185 pounds today. So if I were on a weight loss plan, I were to time that, times that number by 10, and that would get me 1,850 calories for a day. If I were to go maintenance, 2,220, and then 2,775 if I were to go for weight gain. Nearly 3,000 calories, that'd be a lot for me. Uh, generally, on a daily basis, I'm about 2,000, but 1,850, notice how that puts me on a caloric deficit. All right, so for weight loss, this is this part right here is probably the most important. So if you haven't gotten anything else from this webinar, take this away right now. This is how you should be structuring your macronutrients, which we spoke about earlier, if you're on a weight loss plan. Take a look at that line there. Practice a higher protein diet with moderate fat and lower carbs. So 40% of your diet intake should be from your protein sources, 35% should be from your fat, and 25% should be from your carbohydrates. Again, vegetables, they are free calories, in my opinion, okay? So that's super important to remember. Eat as many vegetables as you can. You get some fiber from your vegetables as well if you're on that lower carb option. If we're on maintenance, you want to equally split all three of them. So about 33% for each macronutrient protein, fat, and carb. If you're on a weight gain plan, then you want to lower your fat a little bit and up your carbs, okay? So 40, 40, 20 is a good split to be in. Take some time to write this down. If you are writing things down, put it in your phone, take a picture, doesn't matter. Make sure you get that information for you because you know some people in your family, they may, may be even thinking, maybe you have a niece or nephew who's thinking, I need to gain some weight because of my volleyball tournament coming up. I need to be stronger. Maybe you have a hockey player in the family who needs to bulk up, those kinds of things. Then you can definitely look at a weight gain option. So share this out, guys. I, no problems there. So let's go back to me. So if I'm going to do a weight loss plan, here's where it gets really mathematical. So if I'm going too fast, I apologize. I want to make sure that I get some time for you, though, in the Q&A. Uh, so this is really, really important. So if I'm 1,850 calories per day, 40% of that will get me 740 calories per day. So again, we spoke about earlier that there are four grams of protein or four calories per gram of protein. So I want to divide that number by four, and then that'll get me my protein intake for the day. So I should be eating around 185 grams of protein per day. Super, super important. Okay. Now, if I'm off a couple of days, if I'm down to 150, it doesn't matter. If I'm off to 210, it doesn't matter. But I just want to kind of hover plus or minus, I'd say maybe 10, 15, or even 20 grams around that number as close as I can. Super important. So if my fats. 35% of my calorie intake, my total calorie intake, should be from fat. So that'll get me 648 calories. Divide that by nine. Remember, there are more calories per gram of fat. That'll get me about 72 grams per fat. Again, plus or minus if you're off by maybe five or 10, no big deal. And then 25% should be coming from my carbohydrates. So look at that number there. 462 calories from carbs, divide that by four, that gets me to 115 grams of carbohydrates per day. If I'm a little bit lower, no big deal, but I don't want to go extremely high on my carbs. I actually would not exceed, I'd say about 150 carbs per day, 150 grams of carbs per day. Again, this is for me. I want you to try and calculate these numbers on your own, all right? So how to deal with a changing metabolism. This is super important as well because we spoke about the basic, um, uh, your basal metabolic rate earlier as well. And I want to talk about as we get past the age of 30. Okay. But before we do that, I just want to check if there are any questions in the chat here. 
All right, good stuff. So no questions in the chat. That's okay. We will continue to go. Again, type your questions if you do have anything that you need answered. Uh, we've got about uh, 20 minutes left or so. So I want to make sure that I get some coaching on here as well as we get through this webinar. So dealing with metabolism. As we get past the age of 30, your metabolism starts to decline, meaning you have to be really mindful of what you're putting into your body, your activity level, super, super important, okay? Yeah, it's the rate that you're able to burn calories. This is why it's super, super important because what ends up happening is your body slows down the rate that it burns the calories that you consume. So that's why when you were 25, you could eat an entire pizza and not gain a single pound. But now it's starting to add up, right? So this is why we have to build the habits. If they're daily, weekly, monthly habits, this is why we have to build those habits because our metabolism will change. It's inevitable for everybody. So we spoke about the basal metabolic rate. So this is the rate that your body needs to, uh, you know, have its essential functions staying steady uh, the entire time. So you do need to talk to your doctor. You do need to, you know, find, there are some clinics that may charge you something as well to, to get that done. I'm not exactly sure. I've never had mine tested. But if you need that number, if this is something that you're struggling with, then, then check it out. Get tested, right? Here in Canada, if you're in Canada, then you want to make sure that you're getting that tested if you can, if your doctor provides that service, because uh, you will, you'll see where you are and you'll see where you need to go. Now, there everybody's going to be a little bit different everybody in the entire world world and this is this these are some of the things that will change your metabolic rate your age gender size body temperature uh, any stimulants you're taking and that includes caffeine that includes energy drinks those kinds of things uh, or if you're on any medications as well uh, hormones your body composition so are you Lean, are you bigger boned? Those kinds of things. Yeah, unfortunately, lean people do burn more calories. And that just, yeah, that seems unfair. They're already lean. Why the heck do they get to burn all the calories? That's not fair. And you know what? I'm lean. So I am privileged to be in that because I know how hard it can be. Okay. And the activity level is also a huge, huge uh, portion of this as well. So here are some tips that we can increase our metabolism. Number one, eat more protein. Okay. So if you are eating fewer than hundred grams of protein per day, start eating more right now. Have some snacks with you, protein heavy snacks, like, uh, you know, some cut up chicken, some deli slices, uh, nuts, those kinds of things. Don't overdo it on nuts though, because nuts are also a source of fat. So uh, you can overdo it on nuts really, really easily, but just to eat more protein, pack some snacks with protein. Drink a ton of water, more water, right? So I'm dry mouth right now. If you have a water bottle, guys, take a break. Have a sip of water right now. I'm talking two and a half to maybe four liters per day. Yeah, that seems like a lot. Get one of those giant water bottles from Costco and make a commitment to yourself that you are going to drink at least one or two of those per day. Per day, you should be drinking a lot more water so that your metabolism can kick into higher gear. Super important. Mix a high-intensity interval training workout into your routine. Now, I'm going to say there's a caveat to this. High-intensity interval training is great. It is awesome, but it is a tool, and I want you to use it that way. If you are someone who is doing high-intensity interval training, maybe six, seven, seven days per week, and you are exhausted at home, you have kids that you're chasing, you have a stressful job that it is, high intensity inter interval, draining, uh, interval training can do more harm to your body if you're doing too much of it, okay? So use it as a tool, as some way to kick your metabolism to, into high gear, not constantly stressing your body so that it's in recovery mode after you're outside of the gym. That's super important, okay? Do more resistance training. Resistance training, lift heavy weights, challenge yourself, try a 30, 45 minute, 60 minute routine, just lifting weights. Okay. Super important. Or you can do body weight resistance as well. Really doesn't matter. You just want to add some resistance to your muscles. Cardio or high intensity interval training is not the only way. And it shouldn't be the only way that you are training. Okay. Stand up, walk around. Fix your posture, move around. I recommend a daily walk. And here in Canada, yeah, I live in Canada. We get minus 
40 degrees Celsius temperatures and I'm still out there walking, I throw on a two can mix, it doesn't matter. You have to get moving. You have to make sure that your body is moving around because I don't know about you, but when I make it to 50, 60, 70, 80 years plus, I want to still be standing. And the only way I'm going to do that is if I practice it now to make it habitual so that in the future, I'm good to go. Drink some green tea. It's really good in antioxidants. Uh, it can, you know, it can be a fix to the sweet tooth that you may have at the end of the night. A hot beverage has been proven to get rid of that uh, sweet tooth that you're getting at the end of the night. So make a hot cup of green tea. Don't fear the spicy foods. Put some spices in your foods. Garlic, mustard powder, uh, paprika, uh, uh, everything. Put it all in. Obviously, don't put it all into the same thing, but you know what I mean. If you're cooking dinner, if you want a stir fry, or if you want some curry, go ahead and don't fear that stuff. That stuff is actually really good. Uh, there's a Canadian study that was actually published in 2001, which actually proved that people on a higher uh, or more spicier food, and I, Maria, I know you're on this uh, webinar. I ho hope you're still on this one, but I know you're into the spicy food. She's a good cook. She cooked a burrito for me one time. Oh my goodness. Thank you, girl. At least I think it was a burrito. Anyways, thank you very much for that. That was awesome. Don't fear the spicy foods, okay? Get more sleep. If you are not in the range right now of seven to eight hours per night, then we have to fix that. We have to get priority is your sleep. If you are someone who is up at till midnight every single night and you're waking up at five, six in the morning, you're just stressing your body even more. If you have a television in your bedroom, I'm going to recommend getting it the heck out of there. The bedroom should be only for two things, okay? Number one, sleeping. And number two, yeah, you know exactly what I mean, okay? So if you have a partner, use your bedroom for those two things only. Everything else, get rid of the noise as we spoke about at the beginning. More, more sleep. That's going to boost your metabolism. So replace all your vegetable oils with some coconut oils as well, olive oils. Uh, everything like that, you know, go through your cupboard, your pantry tonight and make sure that if you're cooking with vegetable oils, if you do deep fried foods, uh, avoid them, avoid them as much as you can. That's super important to make sure that you kick your metabolism into high gear. You know what guys, we got into a lot today. And before we get into fitness, I do want to check if there are any questions. All right, great. Uh, but before we get into fitness, I reserved much of this time today for the diet so we are only going to touch briefly on the fitness today, okay? And today, I'm, instead of just giving you a, pro, uh, a program or anything like that, I'm going to give you some basic, basic things about fitness. Keep it simple. Think about your compound moves, your push-up, your squat, your deadlift. Think about the seven movement patterns, and I don't remember them all off the top of my head, but they're push, pull, squat, lunge, uh, uh, overhead press. Uh, anyways, there are seven movement patterns to uh, practice when you're exercising. Think about that. You don't have to confuse things too much. Work out at least three days per week with resistance training, maybe even mixing in a high intensity or interval training workout. Move every single day. If it's a daily walk, yoga, or stretching, make sure your body is getting its, the love it deserves. Get plenty of rest and eat well 80% of the time. Super important, okay? I'm almost done my slides here, but before we get to the last couple of slides here, I do wanna see if there are any questions. All right, don't be shy, guys. If you have anything to ask, I wanna make sure that this is unique to you. This is my time to coach you. So if you are confused about anything, type a question into that chat right now because I wanna see if I can get some results for you here on this live training right now. Let me just double check the chat. All right, good stuff. Okay, so let's keep moving here then. We've only got a couple of slides left here before I maybe try to coach you live on this call. But before we get to the questions, if we have any questions, I do want to propose you guys with a little bit of an offer. So if this is something that you found valuable today, I do want to tell you about a six-week boot camp that I think might be of value to you. If you found this live training helpful, then I want to continue this momentum and I want to get you into the six-week boot camp to take action today. We want to set a smart 
goal so that we actually see results and we don't just yo-yo back and forth all the time. So when we say a SMART goal, a SMART is an acronym and it starts with S for specific. Be specific about your goals. This is, you know, weight loss. Weight loss is not a goal. Being healthy is not a goal, even though it's a great thing to try to achieve for. But what does that mean? Does that mean that you want to try to get your cholesterol down? Does that mean that maybe you want to try to get your stress levels down? Those kinds of things, you have to be really specific about your goals. Tell at least two people what you want your specific goals to be. M, you want to make sure that it's measurable. So how are you going to measure your specific goal? If it's weight loss, how many pounds on the scale? If it's Weight loss, maybe how are your clothes fitting? How people are commenting? How are you going to measure your results? Okay, how do you feel? How do your clothes fit? Those kinds of things. Those are measurable, measurable goals. Action, what action will you take to do that? Are you going to work out three days per week, four days per week? Are you going to start meal planning, maybe getting a meal planning service? Are you going to seek out healthier rep- uh, recipes or maybe get a nutritionist or a dietitian to help you out, pay for those kinds of services to make sure that you see those big results? Then that's super, super important, okay? Ready. What are you ready to change We spoke about at the beginning, what are the roadblocks standing in your way? What are you ready to change to make sure that you see some specific measurable results? So if that's, I have season tickets to the Flames game and I need to have a beer, beer and nachos every single Flames game. Well, are you willing to take that out? What are you willing to change in your life to make sure that you're ready to, uh, to see these goals? Time, how long, how long do you want to measure this? We call this the 90-day blueprint, okay? So that is a good number to set yourself at in the interim. 90 days, I mean, the problem with, with weight loss right now and the fitness industry is that there are, a lot, there are lots of do it quick, lose 10 pounds in seven days, right? I mean, I think that's the slogan for for Weight Watchers right now. Lose 30 pounds in 30 days or, or Dr. Bernstein, those kinds of things. Um, they, they try to do it quickly, which may not be the best way. Now, I'm not saying you can't get quick results. I'm just saying you have to have a long-term vision. You have to think bigger when it comes to these kinds of goals, all right? So instead of saying in one month, I'd like to lose 60, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Not only is it not going to happen, it's unhealthy to think that way. So a good weight loss goal, one to two pounds per week is a good place to be. Now, when it comes to stepping on the scale, I recommend only doing it once per week, maybe even once per month. If you are doing it daily, trust me, you're going to balloon up and down. You're going to go up and down and that's going to frustrate you. So the longer gaps that you give, the more, uh, the more results you're going to see and the more satisfied you're going to be as well. All right. So back to our six big boot camp. I want to call this the get slim in 90 days. This is your blueprint to get you in the best shape of your life. So this will be what exactly that this will be is it's a weekly live training. So I haven't decided a time just yet. I have to see if there's some interest in this first, but the weekly live training, I'm going to guess something like a Friday morning or a Saturday afternoon, or even a Sunday afternoon, those kinds of things to make sure it works. We'll cover things like hormones, stress levels, how to meal plan, what workouts to do every single week will be a different live training to get you the results that you need. I'm going to make sure sure that I include some recipes in your inbox, at least on a bi-weekly basis, okay, so that you can see some results. You can see some massive, massive results, and we'll get you into our Facebook group as well to see a massive community um, to make sure that you guys are supporting one another because I don't know about you, but when I feel like I've got a win, I like to celebrate that win. So I want to post it, and I want people to know that I've done something amazing because that those people will keep you accountable as well. So that's why we have access to the Facebook group. Now, the reason why I'm telling you this about this is if you're interested, I want you to shoot me a private message after we're done this. Shoot me an email because I'm going to do this for $149 for the six-week training. We do weekly live calls. You've got access to the recipes. You've got access to me to answer anytime. This is live coaching that we will do weekly in six weeks to see your goals. Send me a private message if you're interested in that one. But for now, let's get back to our questions and see if there's anything that we can get to 
Okay, so Maria, that's a great question. So she was asking, is it important to eat five times per day? And this is something that we can include in our live training uh, if we decide to go ahead with this boot camp. So send me a message, justin at justinslim.com. There's two M's in slim, J-U-S-T-I-N at justinslim.com. Send me a message if you want in on this boot camp. Uh, is it important to eat five times per day? No, it is not important to eat five times per day. There were, were some studies that were done back in the uh, 70s and 80s about how eating more can boost your metabolism as well. Um, there are so many different studies as well to talk about how an eating window. So for me, I practice an eating window. So eight hours of the day is when I can eat. And for me, I can only fit two larger meals within that eating window. I've seen results that way. My clients have seen results that way. Uh, eating five times per day will keep you fuller, I'm sure, a little bit longer. Uh, but for me, that means more meal prep. That means more planning. Uh, the two meals per day is where I like to see it. So that's where you're going to have just larger meals when you're in those, those two meals per day with maybe a snack in between, maybe a protein shake uh, as well, something like that that's in the middle. Good question, Maria. Any other questions on this webinar? We have seven minutes left. So go ahead and ask those questions as if you, if you guys want. If not, I can touch a little bit more on fitness for the next seven minutes here. Okay, I'll just keep this window open. So if I see any, um, uh, any questions pop up, then I will go ahead and, and ask, uh, answer them. And I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen here. Uh, because I don't really need to say any, I don't have any more slides to show you on the fitness, but I do want to talk to you about your fitness routine right now. So if you are someone who exercises uh, or is someone that is hoping to get into exercise, there are three components that I want you to think about when getting into a new routine. routine. Number one, and this is the most important, is is it safe? Super, super important. So if you're someone who is constantly getting injured at the gym or is prone to injuries, then you have to reevaluate your workout routine. If you're doing something that is constantly hurting you, you need to leave. You need to make sure that you are doing something that's a little bit safer, um, even if you're just doing it in the interim. Okay, So if you are doing some yoga for the next six weeks, or if you are doing a lighter walk with incline, maybe that's your workout for the next six weeks, you have to make sure that you are keeping it safe because we've only got one body. We've only got one chance at this thing called life. So make sure that you are staying super safe in your workout routine. Number two, is it fun? That is super important. Nothing is worse than going to the gym and absolutely dreading it, thinking I'm not having fun with this at all, at all. So uh, yeah, Make sure that it's fun. Make sure it's enjoyable. If there's a community that you guys can build off your workout routine, great. Go ahead and do that. And number three, is it effective? Are you seeing some results with your workout routine? That is super important as well. So if you're not, then, then we probably just need to change up the style of exercises that you're doing. Maybe your rep count just based on your goals. All right, just checking in. Any questions? All right, good stuff, guys. Okay, so that's going to conclude our live training for today. For today, well, we'll leave you with this five minutes left in the day, unless there are any other questions that somebody wants to throw in the chat. If not, guys, I want you to give me a thumbs up. If this was a good training for you, make sure that you learned a lot. Uh, I will email this out to you as well, because if there's something that you want to replay, then you can certainly, certainly go through it as well. But email me any questions. If you have any questions about that six-week boot camp, that live training as well, because I'm willing to offer that to you at that price of $149, it'll probably never be that low again. So send me a message if you are interested in the live training weekly. Otherwise, have a lovely day. Thanks for joining, guys. We'll talk to you soon.